The Imam Caliph Al-Hakim was actually the, the sixth Fatimid Caliph, and he was also the, the 16th Imam of the Ismaili Muslims. And he began his reign as the Fatimid Imam Caliph in the year uh, 996, and he culminated his reign uh, in the year uh, 1021. Actually, he disappeared somewhat mysteriously, which is what marked the end of his reign. But during his reign as the Fatimid Imam Caliph, Al-Hakim established a, a scholarly institution that was known or became known as the Dar al-Ilm. And that actually translates to the House of Knowledge. And the Dar al-Ilm, or the House of Knowledge, was actually established specifically on uh, March 24th, 1005. And this is, these years are all um, AD, so in the Roman calendar. And it was established in the city of Cairo. Uh, in Egypt. Okay, and the Dar al Ilm had a tremendous library, and that library housed literally thousands of books. It had a public reading room as well. It served as a meeting place for scientists, for mathematicians, logicians, linguists, uh, grammarians, traditionists, and even a whole array of other scholars. And the main aim or main impetus of the Dar al Ilm was to promote scientific advancement. And I think that's a point that's perhaps worth emphasizing since nowadays people often think that uh, religion and science are somehow at odds with each other, they're somehow contradictory. But that wasn't always the case, especially when it came to the Ismaili Muslims of the Fatimid times. So in relation to this last point, I also want to mention that the, the Dar al-Ilm wasn't exclusive to Ismaili scholars. It actually invited scholars of varying religious persuasions and dispositions. Now sometimes the Dar al-Ilm is also referred to as the Dar al-Hikmah, al okay, which uh, stands for the House of Wisdom. The House of Wisdom. Okay. But what I will do in this video is I will try to stick to referring to it as the Dar al-Ilm. And that's really to avoid confusing it with another institution that was known as the Beit al-Hikmah. And the Beit al-Hikmah was actually located in Baghdad. But if I talk about the, the Dar al-Hikmah, people might get confused. Okay? So on that note, what I want to do is maybe I'll switch gears a little bit and talk about or point out a few of the precursors to the, the Dar al-Ilm. So one of the first precursors was a place known as the uh, Jundai Sabor Academy the Jundai Sabor Academy, which uh, was founded in the year 555. And it was founded by a very prominent Sassanid king whose name was Khusra Anushirwan. And at this Jundai Sabor Academy, areas like philosophy and medicine were of particular interest. The academy was also used for astronomical observations as well, but that happened toward the end of the 9th century. Okay. There's also the Beit al-Hikmah, which I mentioned really briefly earlier. The Beit al-Hikmah was located uh, in the city of, uh, of Baghdad. And it actually uh, translates to, and I should probably tell you what it means, it translates to the Wisdom Cabinet. The Wisdom Cabinet. Okay, And the Beit al-Hikmah in particular uh, was established by the uh, Caliph, the Abbasid Caliph, al-Mamun. Okay, and Al-Mamun, uh, actually his reign took place from the years uh, 815 to 833 in the Roman calendar. And he actually used this Jundai Sabor Academy as his model for establishing the Beit al-Hikmah. Okay, now I've actually seen people, as I mentioned earlier, get confused uh, between the Dar al-Ilm in the Beit al-Hikmah, and that's because some people refer to the Dar al-Ilm as the Dar al-Hikmah, and the name Dar al-Hikmah can in turn become accidentally conflated with the name Beit al-Hikmah. So to keep things clean, I will focus primarily on referring to al-Hakim's institution as a Dar al-Ilm. Okay. Now this Beit al-Hikmah, this was a place that was used as a meeting ground for scholars, and their main vocation at the Beit al-Hikmah was to translate, to translate works from, from Greek to Arabic. 
Okay, not only did they translate works from Greek to Arabic, in the process, they transcribed those works onto paper, which had come from the Chinese and had passed to the Muslim world, which passed through the Muslim world on its way to Europe. Now, the Dar al Ilm, on the other hand, placed a much greater emphasis on the scholarly and scientific advancement of knowledge rather than just the, the preservation and dissemination of knowledge. So the Beit al-Hikmah was focused on preserving and disseminating through translation. The Dar al-Ilm focused on extending and augmenting that knowledge. Okay. Now, just like the Jundaisabur Academy, the Beit al-Hikmah also had an astronomical observatory. And that observatory was used to measure with fairly astonishing accuracy, things like the incline of the ecliptic, the precession of the equinoxes, and even the precise length of the solar year. Okay. Then there was also a third institution, and this institution really was the one that helped form the model for the Dar al ilm And this was an institution that was founded or established by a Persian vizier whose name was Abu Nasr Sabur Ibn, Ibn Ardashir. Ibn Adarshir. And Ibn Adarshir's institution was really phenomenal. It actually had about uh, 10,000 10, plus books uh, in its library. And it was established, I believe, around the year uh, 991 to about 992. The exact year is a bit uncertain. But it was this particular institution that served as the model, ultimately, for the Dar al-Ilm. And so about a dozen years or so after the this institution of Ibn al-Darshi was founded, the Dar al-Ilm opened, and when it was established by al-Hakim, uh, there was actually a, a chronicle of, that, of the Dar al-Ilm being established. And this chronicle is actually due to uh, someone by the name of, uh, of al-Musabi, Al-Musabi, and I do want to point out that from a historical perspective, Al-Musabi's work was actually, uh, and Al-Musabi, by the way, was a close friend of Al-Hakim, and he was a court chronicler, and his work was ultimately quoted by someone named Al-Makhrizi. Okay, so we never saw the original quote from Al-Musabi, we only saw Al-Makhrizi's quote of Al-Musabi, but according to Al-Makhrizi, Al-Musabi said, quote, on this Saturday, the so-called House of Knowledge in Cairo was inaugurated. The jurists took up residence there, and the books from the palace libraries were moved into it. People could visit it, and whoever wanted to copy something that interested him could do so. The same was true of anyone who wanted to read any of the material kept in it. After the building was furnished and decorated, and after all the doors and passages were provided with curtains, lectures were held there by the Quran readers, astronomers, grammarians, and philologists, as well as physicians. Guardians, servants, domestics, and others were hired to serve there. Into this house they brought all the books that the commander of the faithful, Al-Hakim bi Amrullah, ordered to bring there, that is, the manuscripts in all the domains of science and culture, to an extent to which they had never been brought together for the prince. He allowed access to all this to people of all walks of life, whether they wanted to read books or dip into them. One of them, or one of the already mentioned blessings, the likes of which had been unheard of, was that he granted substantial salaries to all those who were appointed by him there to do service, jurists and others. People from all walks of life visited the house. Some came to read books, others to copy them, and yet others to study. He also donated what people needed, ink, writing reeds, paper, and inkstands. The house was formerly, or formerly I would say, that of the Slav Mukhtar. Okay. Now the term Slav, let me briefly mention in this last sentence here, uh, refers to uh, the members of the Fatimid army corps who were slaves of European origin, and Mukhtar in particular was the steward of Al-Aziz's castle. And Al-Aziz, if you don't already know, was Al-Hakim's father and also his predecessor as the uh, Fatimid Imam Caliph. So I will end this video right here. In the next video, I will talk more about the Dar al-Hilm and talk about how it developed over time and what its emphasis was.